Virtual Edition. My name is Lori. Today we're going to make candles and I've chosen to make our candles using soy flakes. There is a lot of debate about the benefits and disadvantages of soy wax versus paraffin wax. I'll leave that for you to read about but soy comes from a new renewable resource and burns quite clean and long lasting. So that's my choice for today. What you'll need is some soy flakes, a microwavable safe container, the containers that you want to make your candles in, and some pre-waxed wicks. You'll need a pen or pencil to put across the top of your container to hold the wick in place and you'll need whatever kind of dried ingredient you decide to put into your candle as well, as well as a scent that you select. We'll start by wrapping the end of the wick around a pencil or pen that you're going to lay across the top. This holds your wick in place when you pour the wet liquid wax into your container. So we'll start with four ounces of flakes in a microwavable dish and set your microwave for 90 seconds. Check every 30 seconds after that until your wax has become liquid. Every brand will melt differently. Dip the end of your wick into the melted wax to anchor it to the bottom of your container. Let it sit for a few seconds then pour a little bit of liquid wax in to let it further anchor the wick in place. This candle in the glass is going to be lavender. So I have got lavender spray that I will dip into the wax and use as a paste to press it against the side of the glass. You can see that you easy to knock your wick out of place but try to secure your natural dried flowers or whatever you're using to the side of your container so that you can see it once all of the wax is put in place. Now I'm ready to add some more lavender sprigs to the melted wax and also lavender essential oil. You have to be quite generous with the essential oils to get a, a strong enough scent when your candle is burning. Pour the liquid wax into your container and fill it up to the level just below the top of your container. It's okay to melt your wax in stages to get your container filled up. Sometimes it's easier to melt a lesser amount. For the candle in the mug, I've decided to put coffee grounds into the soy wax. Um, I think, but I'm not sure, that this will give more of a coffee scent when it's burning. Clearly it doesn't, it's granular, but it's not going to matter because the coffee mug is not clear, so you're not even going to see 
the grounds in the candle. So I've anchored the wick in place and now I'm going to add natural vanilla extract to the mixture to provide a bit of a vanilla scent when the candle is burning. This is one layer of my coffee mug candle. I'll pour the mixture into my coffee mug. And remember, this is just the first layer of this candle. I'm going to put some more clear wax on top of this layer, and then I'm going to decorate the top with a different color of wax. So I have filled the container with more soy wax. And for this next level, I'm getting some cocoa powder and I have put the cocoa powder into the wax and this is going to be my next layer close to the top so that it actually does look like coffee and it smells great. Now I'm going to use my Cricut machine to print out a phrase to put on the coffee mug. You can see that I put some flakes of white candle wax, not melted, on top of the cocoa wax to make it look even more like coffee. So I now have a cocoa layer, a coffee and vanilla scent. So it'll be interesting to see what this candle smells like when it's burning. I'm getting ready to weed the phrase on my Cricut machine, from my Cricut machine, and put it on to the mug. Here's the finished coffee cup candle and the lavender candle in the glass container. If you followed my other Art High videos, you'll recognize this as a glass cut wine bottle from a previous Art Hive episode.